Um, good morning. So for today, I'm gonna talk about an introduction to ANOVA or analysis of variance. Uh, specifically, in this presentation, I will talk about one way analysis of variance. Um, more specifically, uh, between subjects, one way analysis of variance. Okay, so um, ANOVA is another statistical analysis that can be used to test certain hypotheses and in many ways it is quite similar to t-test which is the previous analysis that we have studied. Um, in particular, it is similar to t-test in the sense that um, ANOVA is also used to, uh, particularly one way ANOVA is also used when our dependent variable is, well, well we, have, we only have one independent variable, uh, that's one, and that uh, such independent variable is also categorical, while our dependent variable is continuous. Um, it is different compared to t-test, uh, however, in the sense that t-test can only uh, be used when your categorical dependent, uh, independent variable has two levels, um, such as uh, if you, if you want to compare males and females, if you want to compare high school students and college students, but what if your um, independent variable has two or more levels. Um, let's say, for example, you want to compare um, or the variation of your independent variable is um, um, three levels of socioeconomic status uh, or, for example, um, your categorical independent variable pertains to uh, elementary students, senior high school students, um, high school students, and college students. So that's already four levels. So in such scenario, we cannot use t-test no, because t-test can only compare uh, two levels. So with that, ANOVA can be an alternative analysis. But it is important to note that ANOVA can accommodate um, um, situations where in the independent variable has two or more levels. So that means to say that uh, whatever problem that we, uh, that we normally uh, use t-test for, uh, we can also use analysis of variance. So in essence, the goal of ANOVA is uh, to know whether differences exist between three populations or two or more populations as evidenced by three groups of samples or three sets of data. Um, another similarity of ANOVA to t-test is that as much as t-test can be distinguished um, as independent samples t-test uh, and paired samples t-test, there are also counterparts in ANOVA. Uh, so ANOVA can, uh, there is a kind of one-way analysis of variance that can be used when your uh, data is independent, when your measures are independent, such as in the case of three separate groups that have not been matched and there is also a kind of uh, one-way analysis of variance that can be used when your data set is uh, matched or when your data set come from the same sample so repeated measures um, in particular um, the one the kind of one-way analysis of variance that is used for independent measures is called 
uh, between subjects, one-way analysis of variance, and the kind of uh, one-way ANOVA used for repeated measures is called within subjects one-way ANOVA. Um, aside from that, there are also other variations of analysis of variance. In fact, there are uh, types of ANOVA that can be used when there is not only one but you know more than one independent variable or uh, factor by the way in the context of analysis of variance the independent variable is also sometimes referred to as factor um, so in 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 t-test and in one way analysis of variance um, it's it's used when there's only one independent variable and one dependent variable but there are also other types of ANOVAs that are used when let's say for example there are two independent variables or multiple independent variables and there are also uh, types of ANOVAs that are used when there are multiple dependent variables so here is an example of uh, a situation wherein we have two independent variables. So factor one, uh, anxiety, has two levels, high, low anxiety and high anxiety. And factor two is you know, having an audience, um, with audience, without audience. Those are the levels of uh, factor two. And in this case, uh, we use what we call as two-way analysis of variance but that is not something that we will focus uh, for today what we will talk about for today is one-way analysis of variance particularly between subjects okay so to understand um, one-way analysis of variance particularly between subjects we have this problem so let me read suppose that a psychologist examine learning performance under three temperature conditions um so you can just uh, you can just imagine i'm sure um, some of you have tried to learn something or study in different uh uh you know temperature conditions uh, some of you uh, have experienced studying in a very very cold uh, room some of you have you know tried to study in a very very humid and hot room um, and the question is do you think these temperature conditions have an effect on how much we learn uh, and that is essentially what we want to know uh, for this particular problem, we want to know if the unknown population of students who try to learn uh, in 50 degrees uh, Fahrenheit, which is rather cold, in a 70 degree Fahrenheit room, which is you know, normal room temperature, and uh, 90 degrees uh, Fahrenheit room, which is rather warm, um, will these populations differ in terms of their learning performance or um, will their learning performance be roughly the same uh, and you know will they be regarded as you know basically the same population when it comes to learning performance and because these are unknown populations what we can do to test this uh, hypothesis or to test this idea is to collect three samples um, and each sample will be uh, subjected to one of these three conditions um, okay. so let's say for example this uh, is our uh, are the three samples so each sample has five participants um, so for sample one 
um, they tried to learn the material I've already converted this into Celsius um, um, in a room uh, with a room temperature of 15 degrees Celsius sample 2 they tried to learn the material in a room with 24 degrees Celsius and sample 3 they, they tried to learn the material in a room under uh, you know, rather or rather warm 40 uh, 34 degrees Celsius so these are the three samples that represent our three unknown populations so uh, and and, and uh, the values here are the measures of their learning performance uh, and below are the averages okay so the question now is um, um, will their performance um, evidence uh, that the unknown populations they represent differ in terms of their learning performance <clears throat> so um, with that um, our null hypothesis states that the room temperature has no effect on learning performance um, and if that is true then what you would expect is that <clears throat> the learning performance of students under the three different uh, treatment conditions will be the same um, hence uh, we would expect this notation uh, which states that the average performance of populations one, two, and three are equal. Uh, on the other hand, our alternative hypothesis would suggest that room temperature has an effect on learning performance, which would mean that the variation in room temperature, um, so this uh, would coincide with um, a pattern in the co-variation of the learning performance so that would mean to say that <clears throat> um, for our alternative hypothesis at least one population is different from another um, so this is very uh, broad uh, it, it, this is very non-specific and this would mean that there are many possible versions of the alternative hypothesis um, it might be that um, it might be that <coughs> populations uh, population mean one two and three are all different from one another or it might be that um, <coughs> two populations are the same two population means are the same uh, but uh, one is different <coughs> excuse me okay um, so ANOVA uh, for ANOVA uh, what we are computing for is uh, what we call as the F ratio so in t-test we are computing for the t value which in essence is also a ratio uh, uh, but for specifically for <clears throat> for ANOVA, we are uh, looking for or we are computing for F ratio. Um, now it's, it's important to understand that I've said this before uh, many of the statistics that we are computing, um, Z, T, and in, you know, in, the, in, in, in this case, uh, F ratio uh, practically has the same structure. So for F ratio, uh, and, and that structure would be the difference that we are observing uh, or you know, the data that we are observing <clears throat> over um, the, you know, our expectations if the null hypothesis is true. So in this case, the F ratio is actually um, variance, uh, and that's why it's called analysis of variance because we are looking at variance um, which is another way of saying differences you know? so variance between sample means and that is what we are observing 
uh, which would that be? So this one, the variation among 1, 4, and 1. So that is your variance between sample means divided by the, the amount of variance or the amount of um, <coughs> variance in the learning performance that we expect to happen by chance or we also uh, call this as error error variance okay <clears throat> all right so it is now clear that when we talk about variance uh, between sample means uh, we are looking at the differences among these means you know, the differences among one four and one um, so there is variation here um, but what about the variation that we expect to happen by chance now, how do we account for how do we account for that so let me further explain <coughs> so in order to test uh, ANOVA uh, there are several uh, variabilities that we have to look into okay. um, the first one is the so-called total variability so when we say the total variability uh, that means to say that uh, uh, th that would refer to the variance among all of these uh, values uh, and you can see that there is indeed variation and that total variability can be split into several specific types of variability okay um, total variability <coughs> um, is comprised of one between treatments variance uh, and which is that this is the between uh, the variance here is refers to the between treatments variance and the other one is the within treatments variance um, where can we find that um, in each of the sample or within the sample you can see that the scores are varying as well and the variation within each of the three samples account for the within treatments variance so combined those two types of variances account for the total variability okay so uh, between treatments variance refers to the difference uh, the differences between the sample means while within treatments variance referred to the variability inside each treatment condition <clears throat> okay um, so um, let, let's try to uh, put some logic into why we are analyzing or why we are talking about these types of variances so it is said here the purpose of analyzing between treatments variance is to distinguish between two alternative explanations so um, when we look at the differences among 1, 4, and 1, there are two possible reasons why, or the, yeah, there are two possible reasons why we are seeing variation here. Okay. Can you guess uh, what are those two possible reasons why there are, why there is variation in the sample means? Um, one possibility or one possible explanation is that it is because of chance um, if we if we get um, let's say for example three groups uh, make them study even in the same uh, even in the same uh, room temperature we will not expect to get average learning performances that are exactly the same uh, we would expect that there will all or be variation but in such such scenario um, in such scenario uh, that that would only mean uh, that would only mean uh, that the differences is caused by chance um, if the null hypothesis is true uh, and that 
um, these different room uh, temperatures have nothing to do with learning performance then one possible reason why there are we can still observe certain differences is because of chance variation um, so that's in, you know, possibility number one another possibility is you know the, the differences that you're observing is actually caused by the differences in the room temperature okay um, it's possible that uh, these uh, two groups are not performing as as well as uh, the 24 degrees Celsius condition um, because um, you know, these room temperatures are simply not conducive to to learn so another possibility of why we're seeing variation here is you know because of the effect of the variation in our independent variable um, so so this is what I was talking about so one the differences between the treatments are significantly greater uh, by chance alone uh, that means to say that the difference have been caused by the variation in the treatment effects or um, the difference by default the differences between the treatments are simply due to chance okay um, so so there we have it between treatments variants have two possible uh, reasons by default we would expect chance differences and another possibility on top of ch chance differences is the variation that we're seeing is because of the effect of the variation in the treatment conditions so that would account for our numerator which is the variance between sample means now, what about uh, variance expected by chance? How do we account for that? Um, the within treatments variance uh, basically is the variability inside the treatment uh, condition. Um, and, and that in itself is the measure of chance differences how do we uh, measure the you know uh, variation because of chance we compute for variance within treatments so you will notice that in this particular sample the scores are different there is variation even if they were subjected to the same condition and why is that so well there are you know many unaccounted uh, uh, factors that are unaccounted for um, but um, in summary all of them are simply because of random fluctuation it might happen randomly that this particular individual is not feeling well uh, it might happen no? uh, at random that uh, this particular individual is quite familiar with uh, the material so whatever uh, variation that we are uh, seeing within um, is is caused by factors that we have not necessarily accounted for and factors that are happening at a you know fluctuating random manner so whatever you're seeing here the variation here the variation here they differ despite being subjected to the same condition uh, we refer to those we refer to that kind of variation as variation caused by chance okay so so there you have it um, um, and so um, what do we uh, and so the f ratio is if we break it down um, the between treatments variance is um, possibly 
well, by default, part of it is variation due to chance. And possibly, on top of that, that variation might also be caused by the treatment effect. On the other hand, the variance within the treatments, for sure, is only caused by, uh, with, uh, by uh, chance variation. So how do we know if there are really treatment effects? What we would expect if treatment effects really do exist is that this value would be greater than this value. If there are if the treatment effect is zero, then we would expect that this value is the same as this value and hence we would expect if you divide you know the same values, we would expect the value to be one or nearly one. Right? Um, <clears throat> so that is something that we would expect if the treatment effect is zero, if this treatment effect is not present. But if this is present, then we don't expect a value of 1. We actually expect a value greater than 1. Um, okay. And then, um, similar to our t-statistic, uh, we compare this f-ratio uh, with a critical value. Um, and we locate such critical values in a distribution um, of F ratio values and th in this case we will not be using the T distribution or the normal distribution we will be using what we call as the F distribution so this is how the F distribution looks like. You will notice that the F distribution is only comprised of positive values. There are no negative values. No, hence, um, this particular, this particular um, shape. Okay. To the I will not talk about how uh, uh, the, the F ratio is uh, mathematically computed, but. I'll just give a rundown or a summary of how it is arrived at. And this particular table is something that you would normally see also in um, statistic, uh, statistical output. So the F ratio is basically the quotient between, uh, between treatments variance and within treatments variance. Um, Variance is also referred to as MS. MS stands for mean square. Right? Mean square. Um, okay. And to get the mean square is basically um, the quotient uh, between the sum of squares. That's what S stands for the sum of squared deviations divided by the degrees of freedom so that's variance between sum of squares within divided by degrees of freedom within that's mean square within and mean square or variance between divided by variance within equals f ratio All right. Um, what else? So, um, I, I I will show the demonstration later on of how to perform ANOVA using our software. Um, let me now the result of our ANOVA um, <clears throat> after after computing for it um, is is not sufficient. Um, for example, um, we learned that there are indeed significant uh, differences in the learning performance across the, di the three different treatment conditions. ANOVA can only tell us that there is a significant difference, but it doesn't tell us uh, specifically where the significant, significant difference lie. Is it between populations 1? 
and 2 is it between populations 1 and 3 in our sample data it's kind of obvious that the difference uh, there are that the the populations or treatment conditions 1 and 3 are the same um, and what is different is the, uh, the second treatment condition however um, descriptives are not always that obvious uh, all the time so in order to check for the uh, for which of the means are actually different we have to run what we call as post hoc tests um, okay sorry so um, there are um, well at least in most textbooks most textbooks would talk about um, two particular post hoc tests one is the two keys honestly significant difference um, which is specially used when you have um, equal sample sizes and well um, otherwise if your sample sizes are not equal another suggested post hoc test that looks into which of the means are actually different is the so-called Schiffe test okay all right so the short lecture ends um, here uh, and I will supplement uh, this lecture with a demonstration which I will post soon